is Valley News Live at 4. Breaking news this afternoon. Police say a man found laying unconscious last night outside a Fargo motel was involved in a fight with another man shortly before. It happened around 730 last night outside the Motel 6 off 13th Avenue South. It came in as a medical call for a report of an unconscious man. Police say at this time it's not clear if the altercation was directly related to the man's medical incident. New developments today on a civil trial against the Hotel Donaldson. The man who threw a fatal punch outside the downtown bar in 2017 took the stand today. Darren Patterson spent 18 months in prison convicted of negligent homicide and the death of 45 year old Jamie Grant, as well as aggravated assault against Christopher Sang. Sang and Grant's wife are suing the Hodo, saying the staff should have known Patterson was going to go after Grant and Sang after being kicked out moments earlier. Patterson's testimony played for the jury this morning where he he claimed there could have been a better way for Hodo staff to handle things. It's not my part to point fingers, but like I said, I'm frustrated that I got wrapped up in this situation. I'm frustrated that these men were at the alcohol level content that they were in that. That civil trial continues tomorrow for its third day. We'll continue to bring you the latest from the courtroom. Meanwhile, today is day four of the Mandan murder trial with a heavy focus on handling evidence. Both sides took the time, their time determining how maintained the crime scene was on that April day of 2019. Investigators say they took precautions to avoid disturbing any evidence. The defense, however, noted how many personnel and agencies were assisting the victims before investigators arrived. Chad Isaac is accused of killing poor four people at a maintenance facility in Mandan. His defense attorney yesterday said he did not commit the crimes. New for you now at four, one person is seriously hurt and another arrested after a crash in Ottertail County. The sheriff's office got the call just after 6 a.m. in the area of County Highways 53 and 8 for a multi-vehicle crash. That's northeast of Big Pine Lake. Deputies say 34-year-old Yeldon Aguilar of Purim was driving north on Highway 53 and didn't stop at a stop sign, hitting 33-year-old Alicia Mettinger of Managa. The crash caused her vehicle to roll several times. Deputies say she was taken to a Fargo hospital with a fractured neck, leg, and a broken ankle. Aguilar was arrested for criminal vehicular operation, failure to stop at a stop sign, and not having a driver's license. A 15-year-old is fighting for his life after being thrown from his truck in Grand Forks County. That crash happened this morning just after 6.30 near Northwood, southwest of Grand Forks. Highway Patrol say 55-year-old Daniel Rapoyo collided with the boy in the middle of an intersection. The 15-year-old wasn't wearing a seatbelt and was ejected. There is a yield sign for drivers going north through that intersection like Rapoyo did, but Highway Patrol haven't said whether he'll be charged. The smoke seems to be back with a vent. Here's Hutch with a first look. Hutch. Indeed it is. Stacy. as we head into the evening, our air quality levels have gone down as the smoke has increased here in the valley. And where you see the reds in the Red River Valley, the levels are unhealthy for most of us. So limit that outdoor exposure to the smoke, particularly if you have any kind of respiratory illness. Here's the latest reading from Fargo 155. It's in the red out there and it looks like it's going to be lingering around for some time. Your forecast of this smoke shows that it's thickest here in the Southern Valley, but we do have some spots up north where it's pretty bad as well. Good news by morning it starts to sweep to the south and to the east and that leaves us with some improved conditions for Friday. Now that's an update from yesterday, so we hope that's the case. We'll still have haze rain last night is now pushing from Lake of the Woods off into the arrowhead of Minnesota. Take a look at these numbers and you can see here that the um, the uh, the rainfall amounts estimated by Doppler radar were between a third of an inch and an inch where we got these bright colors. Now, as we take a look, just a trace for most of us, but it sure smelt much better. Your forecast tonight shows temperatures will be in those 70s until we get past bedtime. We'll deal with smoke tonight, a little break tomorrow, and we have declared a first alert weather day for Saturday. We'll have the what, when, where, and why on that here in just a minute. All right. Thanks so much, Hutch. You bet. A Moorhead native is the center of a sexual harassment investigation requested by the Minnesota Senate. Minnesota Senate Democrats are asking for an outside investigator to look into the allegations against Clay Schwartzwalter. He worked in a number of roles within the DFL, including a campaign manager and house aide. A former Senate aide says she was harassed by him from November 2019 until August 2020. Schwartzwalter was dismissed from his job but denies doing anything wrong. 
protest at the Enbridge Line 3 pipeline site in Clearwater County. The sheriff says this past Tuesday they were called to the site for 12 people who broke into a fenced area and wouldn't leave. Deputies tried to get them to go peacefully, but eventually seven people were taken in. The Clearwater County Jail was full at the time, so the protesters went to the Becker County Jail. The sheriff tells us he's keeping a deputy at the pipeline construction site all day to try and keep the peace. A handful of U.S. states, including Louisiana, Texas, and Missouri, are reporting shortages of ICU beds as the Delta variant continues to spread. As Skylar Henry reports, the Biden administration is now announcing more plans to increase vaccinations. The Biden administration laid out efforts to increase vaccinations among students, including pop-up clinics at schools, sending pediatricians to schools on parent-teacher nights, and incorporating vaccines and physicals required for student-athletes. We're committed to doing everything we can to ensure we get kids back into the classroom safely. The initiatives come as coronavirus cases spike across the country. These cases are concentrated in communities with low vaccination rates. In fact, over the past seven days, Florida and Texas have accounted for about one third of new cases and more than one third of new hospitalizations nationwide. The CDC reports 83% of U.S. counties have substantial or high transmission of COVID-19. An urgent care facility in Slidell, Louisiana is turning away patients. Most have COVID. Over the last few weeks, I mean, it's gone to back to where we're pulling the board at 11, 12 o'clock because we are capped out. A White House briefing also touched on booster shots for those who are immunocompromised. And we'll make that be implemented as quickly as possible because for us and for the individuals involved, it is a very high priority. The administration is also exploring requiring most foreign travelers that enter the country to prove they're fully vaccinated. That's not a decision at this point. That's one of the paths that's being looked at. CBS News has confirmed Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin plans to seek authorization as early as this week for mandatory COVID vaccinations for all active duty troops. Skyler Henry, CBS News, the White House. The Delta variant has also caused increased infections in children. As of yesterday, 135 children were hospitalized with COVID in Florida. That's the highest number ever in the state. Also in Florida, take a look at the scores of people lining up in their vehicles to get COVID testing at this drive through site in Pembroke Pines, just north of Miami. Look at all of these cars. They say both vaccinated and unvaccinated people are being tested at the site. Earlier this week, the CDC reported more than 50,000 new COVID cases in Florida during a three day span, raising the seven day average to one of the highest counts since the pandemic began. Minnesotans are cashing in on getting their COVID shots. The Star Tribune reports more than 11,000 Minnesotans signed up on the first day of availability for the $100 vaccine incentive. You can claim that bonus until August 15th. Many states have implemented a similar plan to encourage vaccinations as the Delta variant spreads. We Fest is here. Florida Georgia Line will take the stage tonight, followed by Dirk Bentley tomorrow. An ending with Blake Shelton on Saturday. There will be other artists to enjoy over the next three days, including the Eli Young Band, 32 Below, High Valley, and Slam Bama. Something new this year, fans will be brought 200 feet closer to the stage with a general admission ticket. The general manager says this event will help many businesses that have been hit hard by the pandemic. So, like, you know, all these local vendors, we have over 25 food vendors and over 25 craft vendors, and they're all local. You know, they're all people, they're they're American businessmen that run their small businesses, and so we appreciate if you come out and support them. But, you know, everything from food to boots and hats, you can pick it up out here. You can see the full line up there on your screen. More details posted on valleynewslive.com. Just click on this story. Fire and devastation continue out west. We'll have the latest on the massive fires forcing thousands out of their homes still to come. And we do have plenty of smoke in the skies across the valley. A first alert weather day has been declared. We'll have updates for you and your forecast next.